What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. This video might be a little bit kind of weird and all over the place because it has been a while that I actually sat down to film for you guys. And to be 100% honest with you guys, this is why I'm sitting down to film. I feel like one of the things in my life, or probably the most thing in my life that I'm most passionate about, I know that wasn't correct English or anything, but you guys know what I'm trying to say. The number one thing that I'm the most passionate about in life in my life actually is my YouTube. You guys know that I don't work a full-time job other than YouTube. I kind of live, sleep, eat, breathe, nothing but YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. And yes, it is my source of income, but it's also something that I am just entirely 100% so passionate about. I feel like I have an amazing platform here and that I'm able to reach so many people and I know that I get a lot of slack, I'm gonna say off the bat, for being a religious person, but also kind of having like an out there personality, cursing in my videos, showing certain things on my vlog channel, but you know what, that's the reality of who I am as a person. I honestly feel 100% that the reason why God has given me this platform is to share my life experiences. And sometimes I will sit down and wonder, why is it why? I try to be such a good person person, a good, well-rounded, fair, nice, overall good person, and that sometimes things happen in my life that just kind of hit me out of nowhere, whether it's a divorce after being with someone for 10 years, you guys already know my whole history because I'm an open book, or going through a cancer scare, or what I'm going through now, which is a really bad bout of depression and anxiety and OCD that kind of came in what feels overnight. And I honestly feel that the reason that I go through all of these trials and tribulations in my life is because I have a platform here and I'm able to share and help inspire men and women all over the world. So this video, basically what I wanted to do was just sit down and give you guys a little bit of an update. If you did not see my last video explaining my depression and anxiety and what caused it and what I've been going through, it was a very tearful, emotional video. And this one is not going to be like that. I'm gonna try really hard to hold my composure and I'm also somewhat in a better place. Um, but yeah, I just had the extreme urge to sit down even though I'm kind of taking a little bit of a break away from YouTube, away from social media, away from everything. I feel like my YouTube channel, I cannot leave it hanging up in the air. You guys are a part of my every single day life and I feel like a lot of times, I'm not gonna say that I don't have family members and friends that I can open up to because I definitely do, but sometimes I kind of don't want to put all of my problems on them and I feel like maybe sometimes I don't even want answers back. I just want to vent and I don't want to worry any of them. And I feel like I don't ever want to be very repetitive. I hope that these videos do not come across as boring or like I'm a broken record player because that's really how I'm hoping that they're not going to translate across. But I just know that I am not the only one in the world going through this. And it is a very like personal private matter. But after I uploaded that video, I had such an overwhelming response from you guys in emails, in um, not text messages, in comments under that video, on Instagram, on my Facebook page. I was so taken back by how many people struggle with depression, anxiety, OCD, mental health problems. And I think that us, we as a society, we just really don't talk about those things. I don't know if it's that we get embarrassed or that we try to keep like a positive outlook, but the reality is a lot of people suffer from very similar problems to what I described in my last video. And I was very taken back and very touched by all of your stories. I truly wish that I could respond back to each and every one of you. I think that 90% of all the comments on that video were really long paragraph after paragraph stories explaining to me what you're dealing with or what you have dealt with in your life. And this platform right here just helps me feel like I'm not alone. And even though YouTube, yeah, it's stressful at times. You guys can imagine I'm running the whole thing by myself. It's my my full time. Like I said, live, sleep, eat, breathe, YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. YouTube you always want to keep on top with like the latest material. You got to have the latest equipment. I got to stay relevant. So social media alone, like it's a big source of stress for me, but it's also like my therapy and a place that I feel like I can go and be understood and 
reach people that may not have good friends or family members the way that I do. And yeah, so that is going to be my whole <laughs> intro into this video. Basically what it's going to be is just an update as to how my life has been lately and what I've been going through. Have I been getting any better? The medicine that I've been on, what I've been trying to do to get over this hurdle in my life and just basically everything in a nutshell. So the first thing that I want to talk about in this video is getting off of the birth control pills that I personally feel really set on this depression and getting on Lexapro, which is the anti-depression medication that my psychologist had prescribed to me. So, okay, first we're gonna talk about getting off the birth control. I got so scared by all of your comments. I didn't, I just cannot believe that birth control pills F with so many people's lives. And I have been on birth control pills for about 10 years and it was only that one that I tried about three months ago that kind of knocked my system out of whack. And I let you guys know that I went online to askapatient.com and I found all of these horror stories. I even read some, some of them in my last video. I'll link that down below. Of all these women that suffered these, your hormones are just out of whack and you start thinking like a completely different person. So once it got really bad, I was like, you know what? I'm not going to continue with these pills anymore. So I stopped them. And I want to update you guys on that. I did read online that it could take anywhere from three to six months for my period to return back because when you're on birth control pills, I guess that's not a real natural period. So have not got my period yet. It has only been about 20 days since I got off of that. So I really don't know when it's coming. I'm kind of scared because I'm, I'm realizing that I did this to my body. So I don't know when my period is going to come back, but I definitely have all the symptoms of cramps. There was a little bit of spotting the first one or two days that I stopped the pills. Um, so bloating, I definitely have felt very sick and nauseous, but period has not come yet. So I am off of birth control pills. A lot of you guys have been asking me, what am I doing now to kind of prevent pregnancy? And I do feel that I want to get pregnant soon, but not just yet. Like, let me hit my wedding first, <laughs> which is roughly a little bit over a year from now. And I just don't want it yet because I feel like I need to fix my mentality first before I welcome children into my life. So I have been using condoms. I want to keep it plain and simple because I don't want to put any more like chemicals, hormones, anything into my body. So that is exactly how we're doing it. And now I want to talk about getting on the Lexapro, which I let you guys know was a very hard decision for me because I feel like... I don't know, I guess when you go on an antidepressant pill or medication, I felt that it was kind of like the admission that something was wrong in my head that I could not control. And it made me feel like I was a crazy person. I just felt like I have a good enough head on my shoulders where I can handle this and fix my mentality without having to be on a medication. But the more that I spoke about it, the more that I got advice from you guys, from my family, from my friends, Everyone was telling me there is nothing wrong with being on a medication that can help you through this hurdle. So, okay, fast forward, I got on the Lexapro. I started out with 10 milligrams a day and I was very, very sick for those 10 days. I mean, it's really disgusting, but it was coming out of every place. So I was throwing up a lot and I was on the toilet a lot, very, very sick to my stomach. But then on the seventh or eighth day, it kind of subsided. And my doctor told me he wanted me to then be bumped up to the 20 milligram a full pill. So I started that and I did that for about 15 days and I was deathly sick. I don't even want to be that descriptive to you guys, but... I could not be within five feet away from my bathroom because I was blowing that shit up left and right. Let's keep it real. I was also still very emotional, waking up, crying every single day, very sensitive, still that overwhelming feeling of sadness and anxiety. So I did speak to my doctor about three days ago and he did tell me that he felt that the full pill was too strong for my body. So to kind of wean back down to 10 milligrams a day, half a pill. So that is what I have been doing. And the side effects have been subsiding somewhat. I definitely still, I'm at home. I need to be by my bathroom, but it's getting a little bit better. So I feel like my body is still adjusting to the medication. I do feel that I'm a little bit more kind of relaxed, um, not anxiety and OCD wise, and honestly, not even too much with the depression, but I read online that a lot of people call Lexapro the I don't give a shit pill and that it's just supposed to make you more laid back and not kind of as paranoid and look into things as much as one might. I'm one of those people that 
my brain runs away with my thoughts and the fact of taking a pill that will help me not be so obsessive and controlling about every single little thought that goes through my head is something that I want to give a shot. So my doctor did tell me that it could take up to two months for these pills to really work. They have to build up in my system. So I feel like I am getting better, but to be 100% honest with you guys, I think it's more of that birth control pill leaving my system than it is the antidepressant doing anything to me. So we will see where I stand with that right now. Again, I told you guys I do plan to be on it for about six months, and I have an appointment with my doctor coming up in two weeks to kind of see where we're at. Uh, hopefully the side effects will subside and hopefully it will get me in a better place mentally. So next I want to talk to you guys about what I have been doing to kind of cope with everything. The first thing that everybody told me was to take a step away from whatever stresses you out. And at the moment that was work. I felt like I had all these deadlines that I had to meet, all these contracts that I signed with these companies, and I felt the need to consistently stay relevant and even though i was not really feeling like filming a get ready with me or a updated foundation routine i knew what was popular at the moment i know what people were requesting and i felt the need to kind of keep up with all of that where in reality i feel like my head is in a different place right now I'm really enjoying sharing experiences from my past with you guys and kind of coming out with more inspirational videos and chatty videos rather than makeup and fashion and skincare. I don't know if it's just a phase that I'm going through, but I feel like I want my channel to be more than just superficial looks, makeup, and fashion. So hopefully that's something that you guys do appreciate. I know a lot of you guys are here just for the makeup and my channel is kind of taking a turn, but I feel in a good direction. So, but anyway, I kind of got off track. The first thing that I had to do was just kind of lay off social media, not really worry so much about work and YouTube. I know at the end of the day that my subscribers, the true subscribers that have kept up with my story and everything, you guys will be there at the end of the day. So it's okay to step away, take a week or two off. So that's the first thing that I'm in the middle of doing and it's tough because YouTube is my life. It's, it's very hard for me to say, okay, I'm gonna do this because I'm not doing YouTube today because I don't really know what my life is without YouTube. Um, but I did join a yoga, tai chi, meditation class that I go to. I'm trying to go every single morning at 10 a.m. And it has helped a lot. It just, being around other people, having a purpose to wake up for every single day. Because a lot of us YouTubers, we work from home. My fiance works in New York City and he is gone from many many hours a day like maybe 15 hours a day he's gone so I can't solely rely on him to be my my entertainment so I need to go out and interact with other people get out of bed so it's been a really good like motivational thing to go and join these classes and I have learned so much about the meditation and just breathing and the the power of your brain and your mind the name of the place that I go to is body body and brain I'll link it down below, they have them all over the place. And uh, yeah, I've been really, really enjoying doing that every single morning. I also did actually just last night join a gym. It's something that I have pushed off so, so long. Just, I always tell myself, okay, I'll do it next weekend, next weekend, next weekend. And yesterday I was like, no, you know what? I'm gonna do this today. So I did sign up at a gym, I'm paying for it. So that's gonna be motivation to go to it. And I feel like just moving and exercising will help get my heart rate up. I wanna do a lot of cardio. I need those endorphins released in my brain. And I just need to get out into the world more. So I want to join the classes at the gym and I want to go to the gym probably every other day and then my yoga class every day. And I feel like that's getting me out into the world just a little bit more. I have also talked about wanting to volunteer. I did stop at the church that's nearby. They only have like a volunteer service every Wednesday where it's just, oh my God, I dropped, I dropped my phone. Oh, didn't break, thank God. Uh, yeah, like I was saying, the church only offers like, you can volunteer in the offices in the church just like for two hours every Wednesday. So I figure I might give that a shot, but I did fix up my resume this weekend and I do want to look at more volunteer opportunities. The more that I think about it, I don't really want to add a part-time job into my schedule right now because I don't need it for financial reasons, if I'm being 100% honest with you guys, but I would need it more for the social interaction. I feel like it's just, 
healthy and normal for a human being to get out and see people on a daily basis. And when you're not focusing on yourself so much, I think that goes a long way in healing you and especially helping others. So volunteer work is definitely at the top of my list right now. I am planning on applying and seeing where I can basically help out. If you guys have any opportunities in the Nassau County area in Long Island, definitely let me know. Other than that, my fiance and my family have been absolutely amazing. I talk to them or see them every single day. And this is something that I feel like I would not be able to get through without opening up to my friends, my family and my fiance about the emotions that, I, that I'm going through because I feel like a lot of us try to bottle up everything inside. We don't want to worry those around us. And we it's it's embarrassing to talk about because it's a point where you feel like you're not in control of your emotions, of your brain, of your thoughts. And it's a scary thing. But honestly, talking about it with my family, with Mike, with very, very few close friends, which is crazy because I'm telling a lot of you guys all over the internet, um, it just does something to, to just get your emotions out there. And reading your guys' comments and seeing how many people are going through very, very similar things or have friends that are going through similar things or have gone through it in their past, it's just... It's amazing. Another thing that I have been doing a lot, which I'm sure that you guys can infer from the type of person that I am, I've been praying a lot, going to church a lot. I feel like my faith has always helped me through any hardships that I've had in my life. So I know somebody did comment that they feel that I got further away from God and this is his way of pulling me back because it's true. Sometimes when you're living a great life, you forget to just give thanks. But when you're going through something and you feel like you need to sit and pray and ask God, that's when you'll be really connected to God. But I feel like it's so important to always have that relationship with God, whether you're in a good moment or a bad one. So I have absolutely been praying a lot more and listening to my Joel Osteen podcast every single Sunday. And there is a little excerpt that I wanted to share with you guys that just it gave me the feels. All right, listen to this, guys. The scripture says we are unspiritual when we are under the control of ordinary impulses. It doesn't say that these ordinary impulses will go away. The feelings will always be there. The problem is when we give in, we come under their control. We say, Joel, I've always had a problem with my temper. I've always been impatient. I'll never change. Well, here's how you do it. You have to quit feeding those feelings. Anything you feed is going to grow. When that emotion of anger comes, if you keep giving in, getting upset, flying off the handle, all you're doing is making it stronger. You're giving it more power. If you keep feeding that self-pity, going around feeling sorry for yourself, it's just like a person that's addicted to a drug. The more he takes it, the more he has to have it. He craves it. The desire becomes stronger. Whatever area you're letting your feelings rule, it's going to grow. If you get stressed out every time you get stuck in traffic, you're feeding the impatience. Honestly, that in a nutshell is it. I feel like I am stronger than this depression, than the anxiety, than the OCD, than the obsessive thoughts, than that overwhelming feeling of sadness and I've stopped allowing myself to feel like a victim. A lot of times I would just lay in bed and let the whole day pass like that and then I would feel guilty that I was feeling upset, that I was feeling down, that I was feeling unmotivated, like I wasn't making a difference in this world and I feel like my mentality just needed to be corrected. I can overcome this, I will overcome this, I'm not going to be like this for the rest of my life and I feel like as human beings, we try to figure out the rest of our lives in one day. And I've learned to tell myself, it's okay to take it one day at a time. I don't have to know where I'm going to be in a week from now, in a month from now, in a year from now. All that I have to worry about is today. And even at that, just this moment, getting through this moment, keeping myself surrounded by positive people, reading a lot of uplifting books, listening to sermons, really surrounding myself in things that are going to uplift me have gone a long way. I am pretty much trying not to take things for granted and instead of focusing on the things that are going wrong in my life or have gone wrong in my life, I focus on the good things that I have. I have an amazing family, I have an amazing partner, my dogs, my everything that surrounds me, everything that I do have, I need to focus on that 
instead of the things that I feel that I'm lacking in. Also, in aid to kind of help me get out of my funk, I've been doing things that make me feel like myself. I've been going back to get my manicure and pedicures. I have been getting my eyelashes permed again. I just picked up my hair dye. I'm scheduling a hair appointment to get a haircut. And I feel like I kind of just lost myself. I got in this rut and I need to just pick it back up. I need to be in control of this, not let this control me. And I just have to have the right mentality going forward. And that is pretty much everything in a nutshell. I'm not going to say that I'm cured, that I'm 100% back to normal because I absolutely am not. There are still a lot of moments where I just randomly feel like crying and I don't really know why, where I feel like isolating myself from friends, from everyone pretty much. Um, the anxiety and the panicking is definitely still there. So I don't want you guys to think that, okay, she went through her little one month thing and it's done. It's over. No, my mentality, I feel like I'm trying so hard to just like break out of this and grab it by the horns and control it. But I'm trying so hard to just stay mentally strong and I have my weak moments and I have my good moments. And I want to definitely thank you guys for always being there through the good, the bad, the sad, the happy. You guys have been with me through so, so many ups and downs as a young woman just trying to get my life together. And anytime that I am down and I have to pick myself back up, you guys are always there. And it just means the world to me. I know I said I was going to be taking a little break from YouTube and I had some pre-recorded videos that went up and now I don't. So I really am not 100% sure what I'm going to be doing after this if I feel like I'm ready to just jump back into things because I do feel like once I turn the camera on, I'm good. I'm not going to lie to you guys. When I turn the camera back off, I'm like, oh, well... Well, now what? I guess I'm just gonna like jump into editing th this video because I'm like all alone. I have nothing to do. All my normal friends are at work <laughs> and it's like, you know, it's tough guys. It's tough. I'm trying to get my life. I'm trying to figure out things. I feel like I have a greater purpose on this earth and I'm trying to figure out what it is and I will get better. You guys just need to be patient with me and you have all been so amazing. And yeah, before I ramble on for another 20 minutes, <laughs> we are just going to end the video right here. So thank you guys all so much again for everything that you do for me. You say that I do for you. Honestly, you guys don't even know what you do for me. So I love you all so much and hopefully I will see you very soon. Bye.